guys, my name is Yuvita and I would like to tell you about the song that titled Abuse. So this song is told a story about a grandson that wanted to went to Doreri in Manokwari and asked permission for it to the grandfather and the grandmother. And this song is used by national football team from Indonesia by changing the lyrics and known as Garuda Didadaku. Hi everyone, my name is Clarence Angeline from Tall Science 4 and I would like to tell you about our second song. Our second song is called Sadyoju and the natives usually use it as an accompaniment to the Sadyoju dance that is performed in various occasions such as welcoming or cultural events or just for entertainment. Sadyoju is also especially famous in Papua, Indonesia but is also known internationally because it is frequently used to promote state tourism. Sajuju tells a story about a beautiful woman who is loved by her parents and adored by many men from her village, even only for going out together. Even though the dance moves don't fully match the song lyrics, the energetic and cheerful rhythm suits the dance very well, for it involves a group of people jumping and moving around with firm movement and harmony with other dancers. Hello everyone, my name is Margaret, I'm from Top Social 2. So I will tell you about Sajuju dance costume. Costumes for Sajuju dance are usually traditional clothes made of roots or leaves. However, along with developments, there are also those who create this costume with clothes to make it look more attractive. In addition, the dancers are also equipped with various accessories such as head coverings, necklace, and body paintings with Papuan ethnic patterns. In its development, this song is a Papuan folk song which is also used to accompany gymnastic in Papua and even throughout Indonesia. Sajojo is still being preserved and developed until now. Various creations and variations are also often added to every performance, both the movements and the costumes of the dancers, to make it look more attractive but not leave its characteristics and authenticity. about my artwork. So this is my artwork. The theme of my artwork is culture. I decided to paint one of many other batik in Papua and I chose Batik Sentani. Batik Sentani describes uh, the land of Papua which is still fertile with dense forests and all its natural wealth. For the media that I use, I use canvas with size 30 x 40 centimeters. I use acrylic paint for the painting and the other tools that I use there were palette, brush, water, and cup. And I also use some optional tools like pencil, eraser, um, ruler to sketch the pattern of the back. Thank you! Hello everyone, my name is Tyron from 12 Social 2. In this video, I'm going to show you my artwork. So the theme of my artwork is traditional costume. I decided to make one of the most recognizable Papuan traditional clothing which is called Kotika. Kotika is a traditional costume for men that is quite unique because it has a function to cover the genitals of men. For the media, I used a canvas with a size of 30 times 40 centimeters. I used acrylic paint for the painting and the other two tools that I use is palette, brush, water, and cup. 
I also use my pencils, er eraser, and drawing pen for the sketch. Thank you, everyone. Hello everyone, my name is Vanessa. In this video, I would like to introduce my painting titled Behind the Mask. First off, to make this art piece, I used a pencil, eraser, acrylic paints, palette, brushes, water, and a 30cm x 40cm sized canvas. The technique I used was the black technique, where I used thick paints and stroked them on canvas. In this project, I want to introduce the Asma tribe. Asma tribe is one of the original tribes from Papua. They are known for their skill in carving sculptures and masks. It is in their blood and always passed from generation to generation. One of the Asma tribe sculptures is also displayed in one of the world's biggest museums, the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York. Through this painting, I want to remind us to appreciate our country's handicrafts more before another cultural theft case like the Rasa Sayange, Traja Kafi, etc. happens again. Because if the world notices and appreciates this treasure of our country, why don't we do so? Hello everyone, my name is Siti Kasika from 12 Social 2. Today, I would like to explain about my artwork. So, this is my nature themed artwork. I chose Raja Alpat to represent the nature of Papua because Raja Alpat has been well known to foreign countries. The origin of the name Raja Alpat, according to the local myths, comes from a woman who found seven eggs. Four of them hatched into four princes who separated and each became king in Waigeo, Salawati, Dismissal, and Rosmissal. The tools and materials that I use are 30 times 40 cm canvas, acrylic paint, tape, brush, and palette. From this painting, I want to invite you all to see the beauty of Raja Alpat. Thank you! Hey everyone, my name is Fanny. So in my artwork with my friends, I make Honai Papua traditional house. A wooden Honai house with a conical roof made of thatch, a roof, and beads. Honai is anciently uh, narrow or small and has no windows intent to withstand the cold mountains of Papua. Honai usually built up to 2.5 meters high and provided a place for the campfire to warm up in the center of the house. The media I use is canvas and paint for coloring. I also use brush and water. Thank you. and I'm from 12 Social Tree. In Papua, there are plenty of heavenly places you can go. And one of the best places you can visit is Chandrawasi Marine Bay National Park. Chandrawasi Marine Bay National Park is a marine park that consists of 18 different islands and it measures about 14,000 square kilometers, making it the largest marine park in Indonesia. People would usually come here to go scuba diving, trekking, and also hiking. You like animals and plants that this is a great place for you since this place has a great biodiversity 
The next best places to visit in Papua will be explained by my friend Angela. Hello everyone, my name is Angel. Today, I want to tell you about a place in Papua named Taman National Lawrence or Lawrence National Park. This park was declared as a World Heritage Site by UNESCO in 1999. This park has an area of 2.35 million hectares. This place was the biggest national park and the largest protected area in Southeast Asia. There are about 34 species of vegetation that grow in that area, like savanna, salva forest, and others. You can see a variety of animals there. There are hundreds of bird species and other animals like couscous, echidna, tree kangaroo, and tiger cat. There, you can also see a variety of cultures and tribes that live in that area, like Asmat, Dani Barat, Sempan, and other tribes. An interesting place, isn't it? Go check it out and pay a visit then. After this, my friend will explain about the last best place to visit in Papua. Hello everyone, my name is Gwentris and I'm from 12 Science Street. When hearing the word the tourism of Papua, I immediately thought of Raja Ampat or the Four Kings Archipelago. This place is quite a popular tourist destination and it is also one of the top 10 diving sites in the world. Over 1200 species of fish, 700 types of mollusks and 3 quarters of the pearl species known to the world are here. People can dive, swim and snorkel with dolphins and manta rays. The scenery in Raja Ampat is also very picturesque because of the clear blue colored sea, the white sand and the bright blue colored sky. Another reason to visit Raja Ampat is that some of Papua's endemic animals like couscous and the famous birds of paradise are here.